do you like how the president is handling not the drug war per se, but how he's handling the police? The police? I, I don't know how he's handling the police. Will you? I mean, I, no, I'm, I'm asking, I mean, how, do you like how the president is handling not the drug war, but do you like how he's handling the police? Because there is a, 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 a dichotomy there. When you, when you, in the surveys, for example, whether it's Pulse Asia or SWS, people, for example, will say, we, want, we like the, the war on drugs, but we don't trust the police. Yeah. Um, and in there is the implicit uh, uh, suggestion also that the public thinks that the police are abusive. We talk about EJ case. Yeah. It, it comes mm -hmm. from impunity and the fact that the president has enabled uh, this kind of mentality. Yes. What is your thinking with regards to that? Yeah. That is the president's problem because you need the police to go after the drug lords and uh, the drug users. But at the same time, a lot of the policemen are also involved in it, so they also shoot the people that they were doing business with so that they'll have no evidence against them. So that is a problem. And I don't know how he's going to solve that overnight. But he has to try to solve that. Mm. But I really don't even want to begin to tell him how to solve it until I look into the matter more carefully. But, you know, you... It's the the anti-drug war now is under the PIDEA. It's not under the police anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's better, no? Uh, but still, we don't know if it's working out as well because the police is still uh, yeah. shooting people uh, without any reason at all. Yeah. So well, I, I, I don't really know how to resolve that problem. Do you think the war on drugs is making progress? Yes, I think it's making progress. But I think that they have to get the big guys. You see the, this, this big sm uh, smuggling syndicate? Uh, they didn't get the big guys. Yeah, but I mean, you, you, you talk about, you know, you want a closer look. You don't need to actually be in government or the Senate to have a closer look. A lot of things are available to the public. The latest report of PIDEA says that three years into the drug war, the price of Shabu, a uh, street price of Shabu, has gone down <laughs> because there is an oversupply uh, there was an oversupply when that big thing no, came in. Okay. Yeah. So that's a blip. You, you believe that's a blip? I don't know, but it could be a blip. Uh, if the, the prices of Shabu remain low, mm. then it, yeah. it shows that the big smuggling is continuing. Yeah, in any case, beyond the possibility that it's a blip, you don't, believe, you don't think that could, it, it could be an indicator that overall the war on drugs is failing? Overall, the war drugs. I mean, could I mean the fact that there is an oversupply, as evidenced by crashing prices of shabu uh, on the street level, is that not a, an indicator, possibly, that the war on drugs after three years is not working? Well, perhaps it's a outlier. No, it just happened this once. Mm. So let's see if it continues, and if the drug of uh, the price of shabu remains at 2,000 pesos, then I'd say that war on drugs is failing. Uh, people will be asking you about your stand. If, if you win, what is your stand on, let's say, federalism and charter change? Uh, no, I'm, I'm against federalism, but you know, I'm willing to listen to reason. But in so far as I'm concerned, everything I've found out about federalism doesn't work in this country, uh, for example. Sasabihin nila, magagaling sa yung mga pondo ng regions, galing sa region nila. I said, don't you know that there's only three regions in the Philippines that are self-sustaining? Yes. NCR, regions 4A, and Central Luzon, uh, region 3. The rest cannot sustain themselves. So, how can you say that, you know... What about we theoretically are, a, region, are, a region built around uh, Cebu? I mean, at least you have an urban center as an engine there. Will that not uh, work? Region 7, with Cebu alone, will work. Mm. Cebu and Negros and Siquijor and Bohol will not work mm. because the other regions are so poor. Mm. I mean, the other provinces, rather. The regions are so poor. So even Davao, Davao alone, Davao City, that will work. But the vow with the vow sur, the vow oriental, the vow norte, etc., it will not work because they're, they're too poor and they won't be able to have a net income that is enough to support them. So I said, ano bayan? 
Mm. You, you think the next Congress will pick it up? Because some people are saying this is already a dead horse. Cha-cha is dead, federalism is dead. Yeah, well, yeah, the, uh, the, the next Congress can pick it up, but still, with our objections, um, they have to... Well, I, let, let, let me parse what, what Ami said. No? Uh, okay, federalism, you're against it, and really, the surveys are showing nobody really cares about it. What about charter change, per se? I'm for charter change, but I mean, you know, it's so simple to engineer charter change. You're you talking about economic provisions. Mm. Yeah, the economic, economic provisions. provisions. Just pass it a law in the lower house, we pass it a law in the upper house, it's charter change. Yep. No problem. Yeah, this, this was proposed in the previous Congress. It didn't push through. No. This, this mode of uh, amending the Constitution. It's amending the Constitution, yep. but you need a three-fourths vote mm. of both houses. Mm. But I think we can get that. But that mechanism will work for, let's say, Amendment. uh, amendments or, let's say, uh, restrictions on foreign ownership. Yes. of. Uh, Correct. We yes. can do that with, with that without having yes. to convene a con con or... Yep. Uh, Easy. Mm. I mean, we could have done that 10, 20 years ago also. Mm. We were saying that already in, in the Senate. They said, it's easy to pass those economic revision removal because we can pass that in the House and we'll pass it in the Senate. Let's go to foreign affairs. Uh, what would be your agenda when it comes to uh, our disputed islands with the China, the South China Sea? In foreign affairs, I would rather stick by what the President does because we cannot speak in different languages. Now, he's saying that you make friends with China, we'll get things from China. It's true. Now they're buying our bananas again. Mm. Our bananas were rotting in, in Hong Kong for a long, uh, the longest time. That shipment was thrown out of, of the <laughs> ship into the water already because nabubuluk na, no? But when we started making friends again with China, China again started allowing their traders to buy from us. Okay. So there, there is a plus. Now, what is the plus of having the islands? There's no plus for us. For, for China, they build ships there. Uh, I mean, they build ships. They, they, they build airstrips there and, you know, they have guns. Okay, that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, well, I don't have to do that because we don't even have a ship that can go to that island and back. Mm -hmm. no? So, I think it's practical that we'll just follow the Duterte mode. Now, when a new president comes in, he could also take a different stance. Yeah. But I feel that I, as a citizen, have always to back up the president as far as foreign affairs is concerned. Well, the previous president pursued this case in international court. One a major uh, decision for us, uh, the international community agreed with us that this strengthened the position not just of the Philippines, but even of the entire, of the entire region and other claimants. You know? Correct. Uh, we could have agreed with that under a, a, a president. I, I mean, the question being is, where do you draw the line? I, 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 now we're going to talk about joint exploration. I wanted to ask your, your, your thoughts on that as well. Uh, at what point do you say that this is pragmatic? And then on the other hand, at what point do you say that, no, we're giving up an arm and a leg here? Well, just between you and me, between us girls, I don't think we're giving up an arm and a leg. Mm. Why? Because the ships can always go across anyway, because the other countries will always make sure that those ships can go across uh, uh, the South China Sea, you know? So they're thinking about 50, 50, 100 years from now, when maybe China will really barricade the whole area. Well, we'll worry about that when the time comes. But right now, China, okay, it has a militarized garrison there, mm. but the ships still pass by uh, back and forth. Mm. Do we have the capacity to attack China? Mm. We don't have the capacity to attack China. But I, I've seen presentations uh, by people who have looked into this. People like Jay Batong Bakal, mm. for example, where he says that look at it from the perspective not of navigation lanes, not even from the perspective of oil. He said look at it from the perspective 
of fisheries. And he showed these graphs and these, these, uh, these satellite photos showing that it's now China controlling the fisheries in the entire, in the South that, China that, Sea. That is correct. That is where Isn't I Isn't that an arm in a leg? Yes, that, that, that is where I object to, to China's doing that. And uh, I think that the president should make an effort to China to at least allow our fishermen to fish there. Mm. But uh, other than that, I, I, I see no, no, no other reason. Now, insofar as exploring the natural resources are concerned, ayan, magkakawabugbugan tayo dyan because there's always a share for the owner of the resource. So aside from you, a, who gets that share? Yeah. Mm. That's what we have to find out.